So you've got a locomotive that doesn't work. How do you know it's not the decoders? Stick around and we'll see how to find out. Right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, if you've been watching a few of my most recent videos, whether it be on this channel or the Double O Gaze channel, um, if you want to see the Double O Gaze channel, either click in the description below or on the I above, which will appear shortly, and there's a link to it there. So you will have discovered that there's been a few issues with different locomotives over the last um, few weeks. Now, whilst a lot of those are personal uh, to that locomotive, either pickups or poor connections, dirty wheels, the normal stuff, you do occasionally get problems with the actual decoder itself. And you don't always know whether it's the decoder until you're possibly in a short situation. So what I've decided to do is buy a tester. Now, this particular one is made by ESU. Um, Zemo do one because um, quite a few of my chips are Zemo chips because it's more compatible. I say that, but it's Ro Cohen's and Zemo do tend to work together with the Z21, so they're going to be ultra compatible if you know what I'm saying. Um, but ESU chips are perfectly fine with the Z21. I must put that out there, they're absolutely fine. Um, but this one was 40 pounds and the Zemo one was 60 pounds, so. I understand that this one will do exactly the same job as the Zemo one, so I can't see the point in spending an extra £20 on something that will do exactly the same job as this one. So anyway, let's get it out of the box and have a quick look. Now, I don't want to spend ages on the packaging, but um, it's obviously in multiple languages there, and that first page here is in different language. I'll pause it if you did want to read that one. And that page there, if you want to read that, have a quick pause. That one, again, have a quick pause if you want to read that. And the back is obviously a description of what each of the different parts. And then there's a table of different decoders, I understand. Okay, so you can look at that if you want to. But let's have a quick look at the machine itself now starting with this plug here i understand that this is a connection plug to another board that you could put in um, for decoders which are in larger scales so g scale that sort of thing i understand that's what that's for this here is your power in these two parts here and you get this little plug which just slots into there perfect so you can put your wires in there and tighten down on these two bolts at the top or if you prefer to have a more permanent connection you can solder wires to that coming around the corner um, you've got your standard eight pin and that's the Hatton's decoder that I was using on the prairie initially if you remember that then you've got the six pin decoder which on mine is that one okay I haven't got all of these by the way um, coming around here you do have a 21 pin decoder which is that that's a Dapol Imperium which I had in the the Dapol 121 which I haven't really introduced to you yet I will do shortly because I'll just put some sound in that um, and then which is becoming much more common with the N-gauge is a Next18, which is that one. See how tiny it is compared to the, if I put that together with the, the there's the Dapol Imperium and the, and the Next18 next to it. So they're absolutely weeny, these Next18s. And uh, coming around further again, you've got uh, Plux22, which I do have one, but it's inside the Dapol one five no the Bankman 158, and I'm certainly not going to take it out for that. And you've got this uh, Susie 
Oh, it does stand for something and I've forgotten what that means. Oh, here you've got the speaker selection. So you can either have your speaker off or set it to 100 ohms, which certainly would not be appropriate for double O or N gauge. You need to have it set to eight ohms. That's very important that you check there. And obviously there's the speaker, which is just a little sugar cube speaker, I believe in there. And then you've got your motor, which does turn just there. So that's going to be very, very useful. Now, before I go any further, um, I have said this before, and we will be doing all the experiments today on the Z21, but um, obviously this is a Hornby Select, but it will prove the point I'm going to make. On every uh, controller, and I have this one, I have a Gauge Master Combi for DC control and two Z21s, one for each of the two layouts I've got, because one's upstairs and one's downstairs, so it would be inappropriate to be changing them about. It would be a, such a nightmare. Now, you'll notice I've got, I use these terminal blocks, these things, which you obviously cut to the size you want. You just chop them off. And I got that from eBay. Um, do be careful though, if you choose to buy some of these from eBay, because some people just sell that bit and you don't get that bit. But these are useless without the two together. You can have um, some of these um, just normal ones and still use these plugs. Obviously you'd need to tighten down the screw ever so slightly so it just grips, if that makes sense. But I always put one of those on every controller and then obviously one of those onto the um, output end. So it would be a layout, this, um, the rolling road, which I've recently got a hold of. Actually, that's a good point. I can show you the cable on that. So there's the wire on the rolling road. Again, it's got all of those fittings. So why do I do that? Because it's quick and easy to plug and play. Now, this is a nice little one that I made up um, as well. Um, if I've got a locomotive that I can't, well, more for the end gauge, really, I just want to clean the wheels, um, I turn it upside down in the cradle and then just touch the wheels with these two wires here, and that gets the wheels turning, and I can easily clean the wheels with just that little device there. So anyway, let's get on to what we're doing. So my first job is to connect this up with this type of arrangement. So I'll come back to you in a second with those plugs fitted. I'll speak to you in a second. Right, so there's my board fitted up with the new plug. That literally took about two minutes to do that. And I just cut that off there with a pair of scissors. That was like that, as you could probably see the joint through there. All right, so let's go to the Z21 now and see what these decoders are like. Right, welcome back. Now, before I go any further, uh, I'm going to use this board on its own today, um, just plugged straight into the Z21, which you can see just there. And this is the wire coming from the Z21. And uh, I'm just going to literally just plug that in there like that. And immediately you can see the two lights come on to show there is track power going into the unit. Now, you can get another device, which I have also just received, but I haven't had any time whatsoever to look at it. That's called a sprog, which is this. Now, but so this will enable you to connect your device to the computer, and it will give you a much more in-depth readout to what's happening with the decoder. So that's for another day, and I might do a video on that in a few weeks maybe we'll see how it goes but like I said today we're just using this device on its own to get the idea now the reason for showing you the Z21 is because I want you to notice the blue light now if I was to do if I was to press stop the emergency button on the Z21 notice immediately it starts flashing now that flashing light means that you've put in a user stop so when I press it again, the blue light then goes solid and then the red, the control is ready for use. If it goes red and starts blinking red, there is a um, short. 
Now, if it goes purple, is a fault um, somewhere down the line, and you've got to clear that before it will go any further, in which case it's usually switch it on, switch it back on again, or switch it off, switch it back on again, or there might be a fault somewhere in the system with a device which is connected to the system, which case you'd have to go through. But that's not what today's video is about. Now, let's connect up some of these decoders. So first of all, I'm going to connect up the Hatton's 8-pin. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is working perfectly, but it will give the idea. So I'm going to plug that into there. In fact, what I'm going to do first of all is just break that because... Uh, I don't want to short out as I'm connecting the decoders. So pushing that in there and then reconnect that like that. On my Z21, I've created a test loco, which is number three, but it has all the different functions in if I choose to use them. OK, so function zero is usually lights. And you can see that we have got RL come up on the board just there, which means rear lights. So if I press the um, reverse here, you'll notice that it's gone to front lights. So white lights, front lights and rear lights. OK, so that's working. Now let's go to function one. Right, so function one is working okay. Function two. Let's try and move the locomotive now. Bring the board closer. Hopefully, you can see that's moving. So that's all right. And we've got a light on there to indicate that's moving. So stop it. And that stopped quite quickly. And the light has just gone out. Does it work the other way? Let's move on and power up again. And you'll notice this time we've got the light going in the other direction. Lights lit up here and I don't know whether you can see that is moving, but I promise you, it is. You hopefully might even be able to hear the whirring of the motor there. This one has caused a few problems. You might see that it's got um, some bits burnt, indicating that this chip has had it. So let's plug it in. Now these old Backman chips, they weren't very good in the day. And uh, it was always a bit of a challenge. Now I understand that if there's a problem with the decoder, all the lights will come on, but we'll find out, won't we? Watch the Z21 as I do this, because if there's a problem, it'll go red. Okay. Now what I, no, I thought I smelt something then, but everything seems to be okay at the moment. The Z21 isn't registering a fault. Um, it's still got the blue light just there, if you notice. So what I am going to do is go into programming and I'm going to reset this decoder. So I'm going to go into programming track because that's effectively what it would be. And I'm going to change it to eight. And I'm going to put that to eight and reset the decoder. Right, we, now we've got some lights flashing. The lights functions are flashing. So let's go back into, no, into the test loco and see if we've got any control at all. Now it's gone red. So there is an issue with this decoder. No, it's not getting hot, but that decoder clearly is damaged and faulty. I mean, obviously, like I said, with the casing, it's melted. These, these decoders weren't the greatest by any means, so that's ready for the bin. Now, let's have a look at the next 18 decoder. I'm going to reset the Z21. Now, I've disconnected that. 
pull that out. Now these next 18s, you've got this little plug on the back there. And if you notice, there's the arrangement just there. So you just have to be very gentle, line it up and just push. And they are fitted very, very easily. So I reconnect this. So, so far we found of the four, one is good, but the six pin is not so good. Right, let's go for a reset, which I'll show you in a minute. Right, welcome back. Now, when I did this, I had four lights come on down here and they were solid and I tried to turn them off actually. Um, what I found was if I press that, three and then three goes off. If I press four, it doesn't want to come on now, does it? I'm pressing six and four comes on. So I don't quite know what's going on there. Probably something to do with the function mapping of some description or another. But generally speaking, if you press one function, you should press the same key to turn it off. But let's have a check of this one to make sure this is working okay. So again, you can see the motor's working all right there. Check it the other way. Motor's working all right there. You can see the light flashing. Z21 seems to be happy. Function one, yeah, no problem. Function two, yeah. Function three. Now that might be one of the ones, let's try five. Yep, yeah, three comes on. So that's under five for odd reason or another. I think six was operating number four. So I don't, I don't know what's happening with that. Don't ask me, it seems very odd to me, but this clearly is working all right. So, last decoder, which is the um, 21 pin, which, as far as I know, is absolutely fine. So, I'm literally just going to line up. Oops, one of the pins appears to be a little on the bent side there. So I'm literally just going to put the fingernail in there and just pull that back slightly. Push the decoder onto the pins and push. So it's that's pushed it home now. Connect it up to the Z21. Now you might say to me, John, you could do all this in your locomotives. Yeah, you could. But um, the only problem being is that if there is a fault, it supposedly could connect or affect um, not only that particular locomotive, but other locomotives on the track. We don't know if there is any damage caused by constant shorts now I, I did hear one person say a little while ago that a, every it's like a chipping away effect so a bit like a woodpecker chipping away at a tree it'll only it one chip doesn't with the beak it doesn't make any impact whatsoever but if you do 100 chips with the beak it's going to make some dent into the side of the tree. So I hope you understand my analogy there. So if, if the decoder is constantly being eroded, I don't know what the ev eventual outcome of that would be. Um, I try to buy good quality decoders now. I mean, I know this, this Hatton one, Hatton's one was a cheaper decoder, but it's really as a stand-in period. If I've, if I've bought something and I'm, I intend to buy sound for it, um, this will operate the locomotive for a short period of time and then when the sound decoder comes that takes over and this goes back into storage again. Um, certainly for the end gauge by the Backman ones or Zemo ones but ESU ones are perfectly brilliant. Uh, Lens have also had and they're perfectly brilliant. Um, there are other decoders out there obviously but I personally would avoid the cheaper ones. Um, some people have had success with a certain brand which costs about £10. I'm not going to name that brand, but I haven't, unfortunately. I bought four of that particular decoder and every single one of them failed. Um, 
so I certainly won't be buying any more of those. But I suppose it depends on your controller and it depends on all sorts of circumstances. You might buy a cheaper decoder and it matches your controller perfectly, so you just don't know, do we? But anyway, this last one, is this working now? Well, you might be able to hear that, but we've certainly got a solid light there. Stop it. Stopping quite quickly and reverse. Taking it slowly this time. Lights, different directions. Yeah, that seems to be working. Function one, yes. That's all right. Function two, yes. Function three, yes. Function four, I think this decoder might only have the three functions on it, although it's supposed to be six. Let's try a different number. So what do I reckon to this then? I think it's going to be a very useful device um, and it certainly will allow me to check whether a decoder is working or not, which sometimes if you've got a loco that doesn't work, there's always the possibility that it is a faulty decoder and you end up keep searching, keep searching the locomotive only to find that actually it's the decoder after all. So this will be a perfect way of checking that and because obviously it allows you to operate all the different functions and you can also put a sound decoder in this as well to check that. I don't have a spare one, unfortunately, to um, check without taking it out of something I've already fitted it to, which I'm not prepared to do, to be honest. But so I was kind of hoping it would give me a bit more of a readout. But when you look at it, it's literally just a PCB and uh, with the connections on it. So I was probably expecting a little bit too much, but when... Um, I'm hoping to get it connected up to a uh, something like um, J JMRI um, on the computer, which is a downloadable program, I understand. And I also understand it's free, I believe. I don't think you have a trial version of that. So that will be good. And to check that out, because um, I think it would be much better when there's a more detailed description of what's going on so that will be nice to look forward to but for the time being it's good to just check a decoder outside of the locomotive at least you know that it perhaps isn't the locomotive that's at fault after all so we'll take it from there all right anyway so i hope you've enjoyed this the the top video will be the last one from the engage layout which was making a scene from downloadable kits and the other one, because this is going on both channels, is going to be from the double O gauge layout, which was all about the Hornby Prairie and the fun and games we had with that. So take care of yourself and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.